The days before the days, PMS is not nice, you are irritated, you have a flat stomach, your chest tightens, you have a headache, you feel excruciated, you just don't feel good. According to literature, some women are 20 to 30 percent more likely to have dark numbers. But imagine you are hopeless at the moment. Massively aggressive, depressive, up to suicidal thoughts. You have anxiety and panic attacks. And that month after month. Then we don't talk about PMS, but PMDS. The premenstrual dysphoric disorder. And it actually only affects 2 to 8 percent. And what causes it and what hormonal causes may be behind it. How you can possibly treat the whole thing. We will now discuss all of this in detail in this video. So lean back, have a coffee and then we'll get started. Although coffee is not a good idea, but we'll fix that now. So we have clarified one thing. PMS is the premenstrual syndrome. According to literature, this affects about 20 to 30 percent. PMDS affects 2 to 8 percent. Let's go through a very simple calculation example. Let's say 3% are affected by PMDS. That means women in Germany have about 15.3 million in the age where PMDS is common. These are just women in the fertile age between 20 and 50. Then we come to say and write 450,000 affected women per cycle. Half a million women per cycle are affected by PMDS. That's a lot and yet little is written about it, let alone taught. We'll change that here. Who does it affect? Which woman is predestined for it? And if you agree on things in women's health, then you will not really agree, because there was little research. But what you have seen, it is mostly a so-called multifactorial genesis. That means many points come together. And with PMDS, some points also come together. What is discussed are hormone fluctuations and especially the so-called estrogen dominance. If you ask yourself, what the hell is that again, then I would recommend this video in the aftermath. Estrogen is relatively or absolutely too high for progesterone, for the yellow body hormone. And that actually affects many women in the course of a normal cycle. Because, I always like to show the picture, if you look at the last few days just before the period, then we see that their estrogen progesterone is cutting itself to the advantage of estrogen. Then, what is always on the program with multifactorial genesis, is a family disposition. You have simply already noticed the burden genetically at your birth. In fact, it is also associated with pre-existing mental illnesses. So if you already have a depression or panic or anxiety disorders or suffered from depression during or after pregnancy, then the probability is higher that you can develop PMDS instead of PMS. And then you also speak of an increased vulnerability. Yes, that all sounds technically Chinese, simply means that you are more susceptible, i.e. the resilience is not so great compared to such diseases. So there are women who are very tough, they can compensate for something like that and there are women who are simply very receptive to something like that. Does not mean that you are sensitive, but just receptive. So receptive for anxiety disorders, also for panic disorders and also for so-called psychological components in the cycle. In addition to these hormonal fluctuations, which we have just mentioned, the serotonergic system also seems to play a role and also the GABA irritation. Again, technically Chinese, but there are neurotransmitters. You may have heard of GABA or serotonin, you may also know if you have done sports, etc. These are very, very important substances for us, also for well-being. And if it doesn't work out somehow, then it can also be that you tend to mental illnesses. And there the research is also still looking wildly to see if there are any connections. The probability is very high. And you know that too, that's a bit of a try and error, that you of course try very often and still try today. Then we will come to therapy in a moment, via so-called serotonin recovery hammer, to keep the serotonin level quite high, so that it is better for women. And that's nothing more than an antidepressant. And that doesn't work so badly with PMDS either. And that's why there is always the reverse conclusion, aha, maybe it has something to do with the serotonin system. And let's put it this way, stress, inflammatory reactions, carrier substances don't make it better. And with the carrier substances, I'll get to that in a moment, we're also talking about caffeine, unfortunately. It doesn't mean that you can never drink coffee for 30 days of your life in a cycle. But just a week before the period, you might want to give up on it and see if it gets better or not. 
But there are also other carrier substances. Yes, then we'll stay with the carrier substances for a moment. Because they actually almost always resemble each other. Histamine is also such a buzzword, doesn't make it easier in the cycle either. I would also like to talk about food in the cycle in particular. Sugar, especially the refined sugar, the sugar that doesn't do much for us, that puffs up quickly, but drives the insulin level up. This, in turn, also has an effect on the hormone balance, not so many people know. Histamine and insulin are two important substances that also regulate the cycle and could of course cause problems. And maybe some people don't even know that caffeine is produced in the same way by an enzyme induction in the liver. And if caffeine is then disturbed, there are hormone discrepancies. It is also important to look at this. In my lifestyle, in my diet, there are really trigger factors. Of course, I also have to mention alcohol. Unfortunately, everything that is so nice, fun and delicious is often a trigger substance. And that's very easy to find out. Am I more sensitive to caffeine, to alcohol, to chocolate, etc.? So histamine, to just test that, you just have to leave it alone. I would always recommend doing this for at least three months, i.e. three cycles. And then to see if it gets better with the diary, if it doesn't get better. But we're almost getting to therapy. But I have to put the therapy behind for a moment. Because we want to get to the point of how do I find out if I have PMDS. That's a big question. Is it PMS in a heavier form or is it already PMDS? Diagnosis. Yes, super difficult. So there is no blood test, there is no good valid test that definitely says yes, PMDS, no, PMS. That means it depends a lot on you, what you tell us, how well you may have run your cycle diary. That you really look at it, does it go beyond the normal PMS, which is also totally annoying. And then the diagnosis can be made. If you want to have hormones determined or your doctor suggests that, then usually there is not that much eclectic about it. But it's also about the exclusion of other possible causes. Chlorosis, prolactin are such important hormones that also have to be checked. And yes, you can put estrogen and progesterone in a relationship. You will also find out in the video on estrogen dominance, how the relationship should be in the welfare sector. And of course you can sometimes have a suspicion that estrogen dominance is the cause. But very, 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 very often it is not really targeted and above all not diagnostic. So the most important thing you can do is really run a very detailed cycle diary and cycle calendar. And it's not enough for me to cross out in the app, I'm not doing well today. But I have to know exactly why it's not going well. What's going on? Is it a panic attack? Is it aggressiveness? When did it start? When does it stop? These are important, important points to distinguish it from depression, for example. Most of the time and very often it is the case that these symptoms disappear completely with the use of the bleeding. But if that lasts, you have to think about other diagnoses. Online you can also find various questionnaires for PMDS. But there are no standardized and scientifically standardized questionnaires yet, which we can now use as a diagnosis criterion. But they're not at all so unhelpful if you go to the gynecologist with them. We can briefly list the symptoms again. So the classic headaches, chest pain, chest tightness, palpitations, also a certain irritability. You know, many people know about PMS. But now really life-threatening and everyday restricting symptoms are added. Concentration difficulties, aggressiveness, panic, anxiety, insomnia, complete loss of interest. You don't get out of bed in the morning, you don't enjoy anything. Really life-threatening, that you can hardly manage your everyday life at that time. Then it's time to think about PMDS. The transition from a severe PMS to PMDS is of course super fluid. There is no clear cut. It's always about how bad the woman is and how I can help her best. Whether you have the diagnosis of severe PMS or PMDS, it's basically just a formality. It's about helping this woman somehow. Many women feel like they're standing next to each other at that time. They don't recognize each other at all, think it's a different person, even think of schizophrenia. And so, of course, it continues in the environment. Partner, partner, co-workers, colleagues, friends, relatives. All these social contacts are also put to the test. Therapy. Now, of course, you're looking for the solution to the problem. And to be honest, if you don't know what it's really about, then of course the solution is always very far away. That's why we also have to look, is it an estrogen dominance? Let's be so banal, then, of course, you could look at how to somehow reduce it, mitigate it. And there are many different ways to do that. Here, too, I will simply link the video again and mention that it exists. 
And there are also solutions for estrogen dominance. What is not surprising and what I have already mentioned a few times is, of course, the lifestyle. You have to go in there, you have to look in there. How do I eat and be really fair to you? Guide and nutrition diary. Just look, do I sometimes eat junk? Do I eat too much carbohydrates? I eat simple sugar. Do I eat healthy? I eat colorful, crispy, nutty. Or do I sin, especially before the time, before the period? Which is a classic, because estrogen has an influence on insulin and the other way around, too. We've already heard that. To go back somewhere, to discipline yourself a bit, is a huge, huge step. We all know, but a very, very helpful one. Thought, exercise, fresh air, nature. Important points. Leave out carrier substances. Try. Guide a good diary. These are all therapy approaches. Because if I know, caffeine is completely killing me. I just leave out caffeine a week before the period. I feel better. Is that a therapy? Medicine is no longer these days. I go to a doctor, to the doctor, get some tablet or some recipe in my hand. And that's the solution. But medicine is becoming more and more holistic. And the system woman, the cycle, these are all very sluggish systems. They need time and good observation. And they're not easy to solve with a tablet, even if your thoughts are in the 60s, 70s and the years after. Because you just hide the whole topic. But I would like to come to the topic of pills in a moment. It is important to pay attention to sufficient magnesium, calcium and B vitamins. They are also important for hormone synthesis. And also important for the nerves, for example. Magnesium is also a very, very important substance. You don't have to take it as a food supplement. It is mostly available in a super balanced diet. Monk's pepper. Certainly a classic. I've already made a video about it here. You are welcome to watch it. But the right dosage. Certainly an absolute probate substance. Which is also scientifically proven. Yes, you can also find the pill in the official recommendations. Sure, you give a pill and this up and down of the hormone falls away. And the women are better off. And actually with PMDS, that's sometimes the solution. So you don't always want to devour the pill right away. But sometimes women just say, I can't get along without this pill. Of course it would be commendable and nice if we could find a cause and fix it. Instead of just shredding the whole thing and saying, now you're better off. But sometimes it's just a short-term solution. Body-owned yellow body hormone. So progesterone. Certainly also an issue with estrogen dominance. If you can't do it with the normal conservative remedies. To mitigate these. So here too, hormone therapy. But with body-owned hormones. And the antidepressants. Especially the SSNI or the SSRI. So the recovery inhibitor of these substances that I mentioned earlier. With serotonin and non-adrenaline. So it's really a treatment concept. Especially if the psychological component is predisposed to depression, etc. Monk's pepper is a tricky thing. There's a lot of nonsense on the market. What you can do right, I'll tell you here in this video. Nutrition and cycle are super important. I would also recommend this video to you. And the most important thing, of course, so that I can make more of these videos. To help you, to help yourself. You can click down here. No, somewhere here. Subscribe. And then you won't miss anything here either. See you in the next video.